Huge thank you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace.com is the easiest way to start your own website. Thank you, Squarespace. I was really excited to get this product in. Sometimes a product comes in and I don't really have huge expectations and it turns out to be awesome. I love it when that happens. Sometimes the opposite happens. Sometimes I'm really excited about a product coming in and then I get it and I'm like, eh. And that's kind of the case with the Arillic H50. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Arillic H50 streaming HDMI amplifier thing. It's kind of on the fence about how to actually make this video because it's not going to be a positive review. However, I still think this may be the right piece of equipment for some people it's just not the right one for me instead of going through all the specs and things like that i'm just going to talk about what i like about the product and then what i don't like about the product and why i think it's not the product for me and maybe not the product for you either because on paper this thing looks like it could be awesome this thing looks like it could be an affordable option for things like the svs sound base NAD amplifiers with HDMI connections. Let's go through a few things though. But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. You ever want to start your own website? Well, sure you have. That's why you should use Squarespace.com. Squarespace.com is the easiest way to start your own website. If you have a business and you don't have a website, even if you have a website, you should probably port it over to Squarespace because it's super easy. Why? Because you only have to type in a few things about yourself or about your business. Then Squarespace gives you a whole bunch of templates and the only thing you have to do is drag and drop your own pictures, double click on the text box and fill things out about you or your website. Want to start a coffee, a monthly coffee mug membership? See if coffee club membership on a monthly basis.com is available. That one rolls right off the tongue. If you're a photographer or videographer, you need to have your own website. Don't put your stuff up on Instagram. Well, you probably still should put it on Instagram, but have your own website. Sell prints, book consultation appointments, sell products. And even if you've never done it before, Squarespace makes it super easy. They have a whole help section, a help center with videos. Want to do email campaigns? They've got you covered. Want to sell products? Squarespace has you covered. Book appointments, Squarespace has you covered. If you've been on the fence about starting a website, be on the fence no more. Jump off and jump into squarespace.com slash cheap audio man to get 10% off your first order. Use the code cheap audio man. I have created multiple websites using squarespace.com and it's been super easy. Once I had an idea and actually had the website up and running within three hours. So run on over to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man and use the code cheap audio man to get 10% off your first order. Thank you, Squarespace. Let's go through a few things about the Arillic H50. It's got a decent little display on the front. It's actually built really well. On the back, you have speaker binding posts. There's actually a phono input, phono stage, which is really cool in theory. Also have another analog input, subwoofer output, there's an optical input, there's a USB input for your computer, and an HDMI ARC connection. And that's what I was really excited most about for this product. There's also a USB port for a thumb drive or an external hard drive, a hardwired internet, has Wi-Fi, has Bluetooth, selectable speaker impedance, has everything, even a toggle on front, and I love toggles. Claims to make 50 watts into two at both four and eight ohms. Comes with a 24 volt, 4.16 amp, about a 100 watt power supply, which is good because they claim two times 50. Does have a decent DAC, Sabre 90, 9023P, ES 9023P which is one I haven't heard before. Good Bluetooth, AirPlay, has all the stuff. It does not say what amplifier chip it's using though, or at least I couldn't find that. Comes with remote control. Everything, everything about this product sounds awesome. So let's talk about what I like. Numero uno of things that I like is that it has an HDMI ARC connection. Most products coming out of China 
don't have an HDMI ARC connection. And most products that are available now that have an HDMI ARC in a two channel type of a situation are expensive. The Soundbase Pro from SVS, I think comes around seven or $800. This comes in at $400, which isn't cheap. $400, it's a lot less expensive than some of the other products, but it's still eking up. And the HDMI ARC worked flawlessly. I just turned my TV to output on the ARC, plugged it into there, and it worked. Number two of the things that I like. In theory, this thing can be an integrated amplifier. It is an integrated amplifier. You have analog inputs. You have a phono input. You have a USB DAC. You have an optical DAC. You have streaming. You can plug in a hard drive. AirPlay 2, all the good stuff. Anything anybody would need on an integrated amplifier. The H50 has it. It's built pretty well. It's got a good volume knob. It's a little, a little light, but we should kind of expect that. The display is okay. It's built a lot better than some of the other Aurelic amplifiers, or at least it looks better than some of the other Aurelic streamer preamps, streamer amplifiers. This is trying to take on things like the Blue Sound Power Node. I don't know what it's called right now the SVS Soundbase Pro. And at half the price, it can be pretty compelling. However, it is not the product for me. So let's talk about things that I don't like about this amplifier. Number one, I do not like the streaming platform. Four stream is the streaming platform that it uses. Interestingly enough, Weem also uses the same backbone for their streaming service. A lot of streamers use the same foundation, Heos and PlayFi are basically built on the same platform. Heos is in Marantz, Denon products, Polk soundbars. Any of the Sound United products that use, that have an integrated streaming is built on PlayFi. PlayFi, obviously built on PlayFi. Then you have iFi Zen. They're actually using a Volumio backbone. So what can happen is people will use the foundational software and then they can kind of build on top of it. They can build out different features. The Aurelic H50 uses Forestream, and Forestream is used in a lot of Dayton Audio products, Aurelic products, obviously, and some other products that are looking for kind of an off-the-shelf solution for a streaming solution. The difference between Forestream or the implementation on Aurelic and something like the Weem is the Weem has dozens of more features, including gapless playback on Amazon Music. That is the first thing that I check when I have a new streamer in. Does it play gaplessly? I always use Nirvana MTV Unplugged. From the first track into the second track, it should be seamless. There should be no gaps. There was a gap when using Amazon Music through the internal app and playing it through the H50. So that for me, somewhat of a deal breaker because with Weem, with gapless playback on the Weem with Amazon Music, that's the bare minimum when I'm judging a streaming service. Even PlayFi has gapless playback now. Strike two, heavy handed tone controls. I just did a video on an SMSL, I think it's the A50 is a little amplifier that they have. That one used a Texas Instruments amp chip. I didn't particularly love the sound of it. It did have some baked in EQ settings and it also had tone controls. The H50 also has tone controls. However, they are fundamentally unusable unless you're doing one, plus one or negative one. So very similar to the A50 from SMSL, the tone controls are very heavy handed and it's a digital tone control. So it's not a variable tone control. So it's one, two, negative one, negative two. What you get is what you get. I'll get into sound here in a little bit, but I was not able to get this to sound the way I liked it with the tone controls, just too heavy handed. And I also think the frequencies that they're affecting or the cue, the design of how it's affecting the frequencies and the surrounding frequencies just isn't well done. I don't think they're put at the right frequencies. The bass seemed to be almost into the lower mid range and the treble seemed to be in the upper mid range. I wasn't getting things filled out. I was getting things covered up when I was trying to increase the bass on the treble wasn't really increasing the sizzle part. I was increasing the upper vocals, disappointed in the tone controls. Strike three, when I turned this thing off, it popped into the speakers and the subwoofer. So go back into the eighties. You don't have a lot of money. You're a teenager. You're trying to put an amplifier in your car. So you get it, you get it all wired up. And as soon as you turn off the engine, 
you hear a and that pop i think maybe it's capacitors discharging you've heard it before though if you're into audio so when you power this thing down the subwoofer makes a huge pop and there's also a pop through the speakers in this day and age that is unacceptable strike four the overall sound signature, very thin. I had the Q Acoustics 5020 hooked up and that's a neutral speaker. It's not thin, it's not thick, it's got dynamics. Just about every amplifier I've used to power that speaker, they've all sound similar, but this is super thin. I felt like the entirety of the lower mid range and the bass was completely rolled off on this amplifier. It does have good air. It does have good width, but there's no fullness in male vocals or female vocals for that matter. There's no authority in the bass. I watched part of Breakfast Club. I watched part of Terminator 2. We watched two episodes of Stranger Things last night on it. Listened to half of my test track playlist. And without a subwoofer, this is fundamentally unusable with the Q Acoustics 5020. There are probably some speakers that would maybe work well with this. ELAC BS41s, but still that's pretty low efficiency and low impedance. You have the four ohm switchable impedance selector on the back, maybe. But I got to a point with the H50 where I wasn't gonna try to talk it into being a good component. However, the Acoustic Energy AE300 would probably be a good fit with this amplifier. There are some speakers out there that will somewhat mitigate the deficiencies of this amplifier from a sonic standpoint, in my opinion. If you don't mind that sound, then this could be the amplifier for you. This also comes with a remote control. No real complaints about the remote control outside it being super cheap. But the other complaint I have about this is I don't think at $400 it's a compelling price point. I get that it's a lot cheaper, almost by a factor of two, compared to something like the Blue Sound Node. $300 cheaper than the SVS Sound Base, but it's not close enough to those. The Sound Base Pro sounds amazing and it doesn't even have tone controls. On paper, this is a deal. In practice though, it's not really worth it. I was talking to one of my patrons last night about this and I said, this sounds worse than a sound bar. I think for movies and TV, it's okay. But with all the inputs on the back, this is meant to replace a two channel system. And it just doesn't sound as good as a two channel system. And at $400, you could get a used AV receiver or even a new AV receiver. And it's going to sound as good as this thing. And usually that's my, that's my argument about using home theater receivers for music is they usually sound thin. They usually sound exactly like this. So if you're gonna get a two channel, it sounds exactly like a home theater, you might as well get a home theater that has a whole bunch more functionality and already has five HDMI inputs and eARCs and all that good stuff. I just don't think this is a good product for music. For movies, I don't even think it's a good product for movies because vocals just sounded unnatural. The streamer's not gapless and AV receivers coming at the same price point usually have some type of streaming capability. AirPlay, Chromecast, some of them even have Tidal Connect now. At $400, if you can save maybe another $100, you can get something like the Klipsch, the Fives. The popping and stuff when you turn it off, that's that could blow up a subwoofer and it could screw up your speakers too. So I can't recommend this product. If you want to take a chance on it, you certainly can, but don't go into it thinking that this is going to replace any type of two channel setup because even a modest two channel setup is going to sound better than this. Even something like the V3, the BT20A from Fozzy Audio, the IEMA A08, A07, combined with a Weem Mini or combined with a Weem Pro is going to come in lower. You're going to have all the functionality with the exception of the HDMI input and maybe a sub output, and I guess a phone stage too. You could cobble together a system though that's cheaper than this and sounds way better than the H50. I really, I'm sorry, it just doesn't sound good. Popped my subwoofer and I don't care for that. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio every Sunday night. We have patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links. You can sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Click sign up. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of dollars. And finally, you can buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. Put a little money in the tip chart, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. I thought maybe you'd be able to binge watch and binge listen through the Arillic H50. 
but I wouldn't recommend it. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.